Alrighty ho, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes of this rational function of 4 minus 2x being divided by 3x minus 1. So the first thing is let's focus on the domain. Now when you're thinking about the domain, you want to think about are there any values of x that when I plug it into this function give an overall wacky result, meaning that don't make sense. So look at the numerator, denominator, and then the whole fraction uh, together. Three steps. So first, is there any problem with plugging any x value into here? Well, no. You can plug in a negative value, positive value, or zero. Right? You can do that math. There's no issue. How about then x down here in the denominator? Again, no issue with just looking at the denominator, right? There's no square root here around the x or anything like that, or square root around this whole thing. You can plug in any x value and calculate it, positive, negative, zero. Okay? However, when you look at the function as a whole now, there's something special about a value that cannot be used in the denominator of a fraction. And you know that that value is zero. The denominator cannot be zero. All right. So there is a special value down here for the overall function that the x cannot obtain. And because if it does, this whole thing will go to zero. What is it? Well, you can simply take this function, 3x minus 1, meaning the denominator, and just set it equal to zero. And if you solve this now for zero, uh, for x, right, you get 3x equaling 1, divide the 3 out of both sides, and you're going to get 1 third. So when x is equal to 1 third, meaning if you take 3 times 1 third, that's going to be, or 1 third of 3, that's a 1, and 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. That's a problem. It's going to lead an undefined result here for this function. So the domain, and that's the only restriction, so the domain we would write as like all real numbers, Okay, all real numbers except for uh, x being equal to one third. Okay, or just x, or except for one third. All right, that's all. All right, so that takes care of the domain. Next thing is going to be to look at the vertical asymptotes. Now, when you do the vertical asymptotes, it's very actually similar to the domain kind of. All right, however, there's one thing you want to make sure you do at the start. When you're finding or identifying vertical asymptotes, please make sure your functions are in fully factored form. Okay, fully factored form. And what I'm going to do now is see if there's any factors that are in common between the numerator and the denominator. Now it turns out that there, you know, I could factor out a two here, right? I mean, I could, I could do two, and then this would be two minus x. And then this, I can't really factor anything out per se, right? It's already in lowest, there's no common term between them. So this is going to be three x minus one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look to see are there any factors that are in common that you can cancel. And there isn't, right? Uh, there, there's a 2 minus x up here, and then there's a 3x minus 1 down here. They are not the same. You cannot cancel them. All right? So on this problem, there is nothing to cancel. However, on some problems, there might be. And what you want to do is you want to cancel those common terms. Just pretend like, you know, I had another 2 minus x down here or something. You would cancel this. And then what's ever left in the denominator, that's what you said equal to zero. Okay. But in this problem, since there is nothing to cancel, all right, since there is nothing to cancel, what I would do is just take the denominator now and set it equal to zero and solve it for X. That gives us our vertical asymptote. And it turns out that it's the same thing here that we did already for the domain. All right. Now, not all the time, not all the time will the vertical asymptote equal, you know, be the same X value as the domain. You might have more um, domain restriction, or what did I say? What I meant to say was, uh, not all the time will your vertical asymptote equal all of the domain restrictions. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. The main difference is that when you're doing the vertical asymptote, you have to factor this and cancel anything. And when you're doing the domain, you don't really have to, you can just set that, that, that denominator equal to zero and just solve it. All right. Now we already did the work here. So this is just going to be X is equal to one third. That's it. Now, last but not least, let's take a look at the horizontal asymptote. Now, when you do this, you first have to ask yourself a question. Is this a top heavy function, an equally heavy function, or a bottom heavy function? In other words, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the highest power of x in the numerator and the denominator. So the highest power of x in the numerator is to the first, highest power of x in the denominator is to the first, and this is known as an equally heavy function because the powers are the same. However, if this was like squared, and this was to the first, and that would be a top heavy, and if you had vice versa, if the bottom was bigger than the top, then that would be a bottom heavy. All right. Now, since this is an equally uh, heavy function, 
what you do to find the uh, horizontal asymptote is that you're going to take now the highest power of x and its coefficient and the sign and then divide it by the highest power of x and its coefficient in the denominator. So in other words, what you're going to do is you can set it up like this. You can do negative 2x over 3x. And what should happen is that these variables should indeed cancel. Okay, they should cancel. So you don't even really have to write them if you wanted to kind of, you know, move through this quickly. But what you would do is simplify this now, and this just works out to be a simplification of uh, negative, sorry, two-thirds. I was just thinking about where to write it. So negative two-thirds, okay? Now, anytime you're dealing with horizontal asymptotes, that's always going to be the y equals, right? Horizontal lines are always y equals. So this is your horizontal asymptote. And this is always how you're going to do an equally heavy function. If you want to know how to do a bottom heavy or top heavy, check out the playlist. Okay, I have tens and tens of problems uh, on how to do bottom heavy, equally heavy, and top heavy. Okay, a lot of examples. If you want to become good at something, you have to do a lot of practice. Don't just see one, you see one example done, and then you have to do one on your own. All right, check out, by the way, the descriptions below, because we're going to constantly be updating stuff, giving you stuff to try to help you through your class. All right, practice work, review sheets, all types of good stuff. Give us time. It's going to take a little bit of time, all right? But we're constantly updating it. So, yeah, we really want to help you through your class, all right? Now, that so th this is the horizontal asymptote, and that's it. Now, what you can do is you can graph this thing just to kind of double check. So open parentheses, do 4 minus 2x. Close parentheses, divided by open the parentheses, 3x minus 1. Close the parentheses and graph it. Right now, let's see what we have, okay? Let's see what we have. So, let's pull this thing out, blow it up, and we have a vertical asymptote here. Now, this is close, right? It might not, it might be a little tough to see on this, but this is going to be x is equal to one third. Notice how this is the origin, and that's a value of one. You see how it's not even halfway, it's a little closer to, it's less than half, okay? So, that is going to be visually one third. And that's what we said it should be, right? And notice here we're going to have a horizontal asymptote right at roughly there or so. And we said that it's going to be y is equal to negative two-thirds, right? That's what we said the horizontal asymptote is going to be, negative two-thirds. And we said that the vertical asymptote is positive one-third. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please check out our channel because we have thousands of solved problems out there, not only in mathematics, but chemistry and physics as well. If you want to excel in your class, you have to do a lot of practice and you have to do problems. You have to understand the theory, but then you have to apply it, right? The test is not going to be all about, you know, asking about theory. It's going to be to apply it to problems, solving problems, doing whatever. And you have to have a lot of exposure to that practice. And that's what we specialize in. We have your back on that. Right? We have thousands of solved problems out there. So if you want to do well, use our channel, and you'll get to where you got to go. Take care.